Wow, this is great. I am so thankful to be here with you today to talk about genes because nothing fits, nothing feels like a nice fitting pair of jeans. They just feel good. Do you feel good in your jeans? Do your jeans feel so good that you don't even want to take them off at night and you just want to wear them day after day after day? I feel great in my jeans now, but I had some awful jeans and I really, really wanted to take them off. I was bipolar. I had symptoms of a mild type of bipolar disorder, but it didn't start out like you think, because yes, I would be right on top of the world, but then I would be angry. Occasionally I might get a little sad, but I never moaned. Because I was livid, I was mad that I was sad. Now, if you take that, and you add hormones to that mix, it's like throwing gasoline on the fire, right ladies? <laughs> then the stress of pharmacy school, that was more fuel on that fire. Then I had children, and I was trying to juggle being a good mom, which means losing lots and lots of sleep, and working part-time as a pharmacist, and running a business. And that anger mushroomed into depression. And it was like a choking darkness and an overwhelming negativity that felt like a brick right here on my brain. And did I tell people or show this? No, I hid it. And did I think anything was wrong? No, I thought I was normal. Now there are other people in my family with the same kind of genetic tendencies. My bipolar is genetic, but if it's in my genes, is it inevitable? I beat my bipolar, and now I have the passion and the energy to live my dream. And even though I'm a pharmacist, I did it without prescription medication, because instead of putting on a prescription Band-Aid, I worked on the underlying cause. Does this sound like something that you want? Do you want to feel good in your genes? Then let's begin. What do these six genetic diseases have in common? Autoimmune disease, autism spectrum, anxiety and depression, bipolar schizophrenia, and attention deficit. At first glance, it's hard to see any similarities, but they all have two very important things in common. First of all, they're all on the rise. They're all increasing. ADHD and bipolar have increased by 40% in the last eight years. Schizophrenia doubled since the 1970s. And autoimmune disease combined now comprises the fourth most common disease in the United States. They're all on the rise. So more and more people are becoming trapped by these diseases. Is someone you love trapped by one of these diseases? And does it hurt you to watch them suffer? Do you carry the genes for one of these diseases and worry that you or your children will become trapped by them? Today, I want to share with you what I believe to be a key component in reducing the risk of and the severity of these diseases. And it all has to do with that second thing they have in common, because they are all associated with poor methylation. Raise your hand if you've heard of methylation. <laughs> Don't feel bad. The average doctor does not fully understand it either. But to explain what methylation is, you must first understand what a methyl group is. A methyl group, it's a really simple molecule. It's one carbon bound to three hydrogens. Now this methyl group is passed from one chemical in the body to another in a process called methylation. 
Now, some of the chemicals that are passing this methyl group are DNA, some are enzymes, and some other things. But we're just going to make it easier. We're going to call them all chemicals today. Now, this is an oversimplification, but it's like in this video with children passing balloons around a circle. The balloons represent methyl groups. The children represent the chemicals passing those methyl groups around. This is happening in the body all the time, very rapidly. But what happens if one of those children slows down or stops passing methyl groups? The balloons back up, right? And some children have a lot of balloons, and other children don't have any. The same thing can happen in your body. If one of the chemicals that is supposed to be passing methyl groups around slows down or stops, those methyl groups can back up, and some chemicals will have too many, and others will not have the, the methyl groups that they need. And this is really important because methylation is required in over 240 different reactions in your body. Did you catch that? Methylation is required for over 240 different reactions happening in your body all the time. Methylation is vital to feeling good in your genes. Without it, some very important things don't happen because methylation is crucial for removing chemicals and toxins from your body. Do you remember the last time you forgot to take out the trash? It got pretty smelly, right? Well, those chemicals and toxins, they can get pretty smelly too. Methylation is also important because it helps to metabolize hormones and keep those hormones in balance. Methylation is also important in making and breaking down chemical messengers in the brain like serotonin and dopamine. Methylation is also used in maintaining your defense system because it helps you to build some immune cells. There are a lot of different functions of methylation, but perhaps the most important function of methylation is in the duplication and reading of DNA, or DNA methylation. In fact, stopping DNA methylation triggers lupus, the autoimmune disease in mice. Did you catch that one? Stopping DNA methylation triggers lupus in mice. DNA methylation is absolutely essential, and all of these reasons are good reasons to keep those balloons going around the circle. We know we want good methylation. What slows down or stops methylation? Some genetic mutations can. The most widely researched one so far is called MTHFR, which stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. The name is long, and it's not important. What is important is that the MTHFR genes code for an essential enzyme in methylation. Certain MTHFR genes correlate with poor methylation and with those six diseases we talked about earlier. I have some MTHFR genetic mutations, along with several other genetic mutations that would predispose me to my bipolar. So why don't I have it now? I know I was moody. Some people have mood swings. I was on a mood roller coaster because you can get off of a swing. But once you're on a roller coaster, you are stuck and you're not in control and you go up and down. Well, I was using some functional medicine principles and I was working on some other health issues and I changed my diet and I changed my lifestyle. I started choosing each day to rely more on faith and to release all the anger and the fear. The change was so gradual. I started having more great days, and the angry dark days were fewer and less often. Because the change was so gradual, I didn't realize how good I feel now until I woke up one day and the brick was back right here on my brain. But because I had changed, instead of taking weeks for that to go away, 
It went away in a few hours. Why did this approach work on my mood roller coaster? Let me explain. If I walk over to the wall and flip a switch, the whole room can be illuminated with light. Light switches, environmental and lifestyle factors can switch on and switch off genes or change how you read these genes. Even though you have the genes for autism, Alzheimer's, or lupus, the food you eat, the emotions you feel, the stress you experience, the chemicals you're all exposed to determine whether you get autism, Alzheimer's, or lupus. This is called epigenetics, and epigenetics is powerful. There are a lot of different types of epigenetic switches, but tonight I just want to talk about nutrients as an epigenetic switch. And one study that shows how powerful this is showed that just by giving pregnant mice food that would give them extra methyl groups switched off a gene in 50% of the, uh, of the babies that made them fat, blonde, and die early. No offense if you're blonde. <laughs> but did you catch that one? Just by changing the nutrients the pregnant mom received, it silenced an unhealthy gene in 50% of her babies. We learned two really cool things from this study. First of all, we learned that what you eat and what you do now will influence the epigenetics of your unborn children. We also learn that nutrients is a very powerful epigenetic switch. I changed my nutrients. Have you ever read the ingredients list on the food you were eating and realized you could not even pronounce half the words there or know what they do or know what they came from? Well, I tossed out all that processed stuff. I started eating real whole foods. The pregnant mice, they got food that would give them extra methyl groups. I got extra methyl groups too by eating more vegetables, especially the leafy green kinds. You can't believe how my kids complain about the many things they find vegetables in now. <sighs> I went from one or two servings of vegetables a day to six or seven. I also took supplements that would give me extra methyl groups, like SAMe or methylfolate, which is just a methylated kind of folate, or methylcobalamin, which is a methylated kind of B12. When I learned how to treat MTHFR and improve methylation in my patients, I made some more changes, and I continue to improve and have more energy. Now, instead of a dark, pressing weight and a brick right here on my brain, I'm filled with joy and purpose and passion. Do you have a passion? Do you have a dream, something that you want to do that if you felt better, you could? Maybe you want the energy to spend time with your family. Maybe you want less anxiety and depression. Or you, you just want to not blow your top so often. Maybe you want to prevent those six diseases that we talked about earlier and many others like them. Then explore methylation, because epigenetics and methylation are powerful in shaping who you are and how you feel. If you are willing to choose each day, you can change your epigenetics and improve your methylation. You can feel good in your genes or in spite of them. Thank you.